at least two of our members are here, so we're going to go ahead and start. I'm going to call the meeting to order of the St. Louis County Public Improvements Committee. This is a meeting of Tuesday, September 14th, 2020 at 1 p.m. The County Council's Public Improvements Committee will meet regarding response to council order dated November 26, 2019, exercising their review and referring this item back to the Planning Commission, PC 24-19, Edworth Senior Living RE LLC, reiterating its approval as indicated with regard to a pending request for a CUP conditional use permit in R7 on the northeast side of Adworth Drive, approximately 800 feet northwest of Burview Lane. Uh, would you call the roll, Madam Clerk? Yes, ma'am. Council Member Days? Here. Council Member Fitch? Here. Council Member Clancy? Here. <clears throat> Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. The committee takes official notice of and admits into evidence all St. Louis County ordinances and resolutions. As a bit of history, we uh, met last year on this issue. We are going to hear a briefly from the Planning Commission to bring us up to where we are today, and then we will move on with the agenda as it has been presented. So we have, um, Gail, Is are you going to be doing this or someone else? Jacob Trimble from the planning department. Jacob, it's yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, council members. My name is Jacob Trimble. I'm a planner in the Department of Planning, and I'm here to discuss PC 2419, Adworth Senior Living RE LLC, which is a request for a conditional use permit in the R7 district to permit the construction and operation of a 71 unit group home for the elderly. Uh, to bring us up to speed, the Planning Commission did host a public hearing on this uh, petition back in July of 2019, and the Commission did grant the conditional use permit in November of 2019. The Council then exercised its power of review within the 15-day period, and ultimately the petition ended up with this committee, which hosted a meeting on January 28, 2020. The matter was held after significant discussion, um, especially pertaining to stormwater at the site. Since that time, the petitioner has uh, worked on a revised site development plan and in conjunction with reviews at MSD has presented a newly revised site development plan um, that they are asking for um, consideration for this afternoon. And that we are convening today on September 14th. So just to reiterate you and reorient you to the site, it is outlined here in yellow. Uh, as you can see that on three sides, the site is bounded by multifamily development or uh, by some significant commercial development. And then on one side, sort of what we're calling the North property line is where two single family detached uh, residences do abut the site. So some changes from what you saw last time. Um, significant changes to the plan include that the structure has been changed from being a mixture of two and three stories to being three stories throughout the entire structure. And the way that the petitioner is uh, being able to do that is they are changing some grading at the site, um, pulling out a little bit more fill um, from the front near Adworth Drive to give them that space to make it a three foot, a three story structure overall. But the footprint of the structure is shrinking. It is being shrunk by 34%, which does provide uh, increased landscaping opportunities and does reduce the impervious coverage at the site. The structure is being pulled farther away from the northern property line, um, whereas you had seen it previously as being 81 feet away from the northern property line, it is now being shown as 110 feet from that northern property line. The structure is also being pushed slightly closer to the eastern property line where it does already abut multifamily development. Additionally, the petitioner is providing additional underground stormwater detention facilities and access has been reduced to the site to one single curb cut onto Adworth Drive, whereas previously you had seen two curb cuts onto Adworth Drive. So what you saw last time was this. You can see again, it's it's got a circular um, a circular access around the site, parking on either side. Um, you can see that there is significant grading all the way up to the northern property line, and that was what was uh, reviewed back in January. But since that time, the petitioner has revised their site development plan, and this is the new plan. There's a single access 
onto Edworth Drive. Parking has been moved exclusively to the western side of the parcel. The project has been shrunk in um, its overall footprint and moved closer or moved farther away from the from the um, single family detached residences. And one of the benefits of that is they were able to reduce the amount of grading along the northern property line, um, leaving some more natural um, or already existing um, topography to the site. Um, and we are going to defer discussion of in depth of the stormwater um, question. I know Mr. Boyer, who is on, on, on the call and also MSD is here to more fulsomely discuss those issues. Um, and with that, um, staff finds that this is still an appropriate use for the site. Thank you very much, Jacob. Uh, any questions from the committee at this point? Hearing none, we will move on to the petitioner. Uh, do you have a presentation? Uh, yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. This is Paul Boyer. Um, I'll make. Mm -hmm. a, uh, I'm with Civil Engineering Design Consultants, and I was going to make a presentation um, for the developer. Okay, so um, Jacob, I'm trying not to cover the same ground Jacob did, um, but it's, again, uh, and just to confirm, you see the location map when I'm presenting. Does everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we had presented back in, in January uh, of this year uh, to the Public Improvements Committee, and then the biggest con the big concern centered around stormwater, as Jacob indicated. So we left that meeting with instructions to do go through a conceptual review process with uh, Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District. Uh, the the conceptual review process is hugely beneficial for, for uh, engineers in this type of development because you, when you submit to MSD, basically you're submitting plans and calculations um, and requesting guidance and what the um, design standards will be required as you proceed forward with the construction documents, assuming the project moves forward. So we had put a set of plans together um, and those plans were based on the initial concerns that we understood with the adjacent property owner to the north. And just to, just to summarize those concerns briefly, um, they're having uh, dramatic ponding issues that run and stormwater flooding issues that run through their water. So there's a box culvert that enters the, the west side of our property and it runs through, uh, so there's a box called that runs to the west side of the property and then runs north and arcs through the property to the north. It's a shallow box culvert. In addition, there's a significant amount of storm water that is discharged off Edworth Drive. It's collected south of it, discharged off across Edworth Drive and surface drains across the property and the property drains from south to north. And what's happening is the water's been pooling and ponding in that water and, and raising obvious concerns for the, the neighbors to the north, as well as infiltration issues. There's also a significant amount of water coming from the west, northwest, uh, coming onto uh, the, what we'll call the Adworth property and onto the, the adjacent properties to the north. So when we, we did a prepared plans for a conceptual uh, submittal to MSD, what we had looked at, we had analyzed the, the box culvert for the, that runs, enters the site from the west and runs to the north. We analyzed the hydraulics on that culvert. And then we also looked at the stormwater mitigation measures and control measures that we would have to implement on the site. Um, as far as detention, stormwater detention, uh, we had bioretention, and then um, subsequent to the MSD conceptual review, we also added additional underground storage. Um, so we had submitted plans to MSD at, with the intent of getting a response back, which we did, which pro provided the guidelines that we would have to adhere to should the project move forward uh, with the construction documents. So um, I'll Skim through this again. Jacob's already touched on this. As far as it's, we're talking about two lots for the Edward development, totaling 2.83 acres, and the, this type of development requires a conditional use permit. Um, you can talk about the surrounding areas. Again, we have R7 uses surrounding it, and then single family to the north of the development itself. What I've done here is shown plan modifications from the plan that we presented in January to the, the, the current plan, which um, Jacob showed you the black and white plan that he just presented. 
So the building stories for the original development that we proposed, uh, we showed before the PIC meet, uh, committee in January was between two and three stories. Uh, we consolidated that to three stories and what that did was allowed us to tighten up the footprint. So we had a smaller building footprint area. So we went from 33,000 to roughly 22,000. And the impervious area on the site, uh, total impervious area from including building and pavement went from 57 to 48%. And as Jacob already indicated, we extended the distance from the building to the, the north property line from 81 feet to 110 feet. So we uh, increased it dramatically. And again, the distance uh, from the pavement, closest pavement to the north property line was also increased from basically 50 feet to 57 feet. Um, again, detention in, a, in our submission and review uh, and addressing the comments, some of the initial comments with from MSD's conceptual review, we went from just a single above ground basin to a combined basin above and below ground. And what this allowed us to do is increase the storage as needed to address the concerns of stormwater on site. And by that, I mean, um, uh, not to get too far in the weeds, I don't wanna lose people, but there's a significant amount of storm water that runs through this property and it goes through this box culvert and the, the water is surface draining and contributing to ponding on the neighbor's property and our property. And also the water that runs through the culvert is actually such that on heavy storms, the water actually uh, comes out of the inlets rather than in the inlets in surcharge conditions, uh, exacerbating the ponding in these areas. So what we've done for our site is we've added additional attention, not only above ground, but also below ground with the intent being, we would actually de de detain the entire storm event for our site and then re slowly release it. Uh, originally, to be clear, when we submitted the plans, we were going to de provide detention on site and immediately start releasing it into the box culvert downstream. So the, the latest plan that we're proposing today, we're, we actually detain the entire storm event and then we'll release it after the peak uh, peak event of the storm has passed. Um, so thereby it does it uh, provides additional storage, but also um, mitigates the amount of runoff that's entering the system from this site. So MSD's, uh, their, MSD had a, a basically a two page comment letter, I believe, but the, the takeaways, the main takeaways from the comment letter were the addressing the concerns that um, the neighbors had and the neighbors, I believe has been discussion with MSD as well. So there's, again, they're having ponding on their problem, property infiltration onto their property as well, meaning saturated soils uh, from this side and from the surrounding, um, the, the contributing tributary areas. Um, We've analyzed our site, assuming that it's completely undeveloped. So when we run our detention calculations, we're assuming a completely undeveloped site. So we're not taking credit for any current impervious areas. Um, I already touched on the detention. We are gonna detain the entire storm event for this, for this development by a combination of above ground and below ground basins. And then the last thing was, uh, which was a comment that MSD came up with, um, was regarding temporary ponding on site. And it, it relates to the fact that, again, there's a, the existing box culvert that runs through this property is surcharged. And so when it rains, water actually comes out of the adjacent inlets rather than being received by the inlets. And so there's ponding that's currently occurring on the Edworth property. And we were asked to mimic that ponding with our proposed condition. So here's again, the original plan that we presented uh, before the PIC in January, again, shows the grading extending all the way to the north property line, the increased impervious area, a two and three story building. You can see it, uh, the improvements encompass the entire site as far as the grading, but the um, the building and the and the uh, drive, if you note their location, then compared to the proposed condition, what we're proposing is much less. Again, we're a three-story building, which we've pulled further back from the property line. We've also pulled the parking back from the property line than the previous plan. 
as well as the grading improvements at the north and northwest corner of the property. So any stormwater that's been approaching from the northwest onto the Edworth property and the adjacent neighbor's property, we're trying to maintain those same drainage patterns. Uh, so we're not exacerbating any additional drainage onto the, the adjoining properties to the north. Again, noting that everything drains from south to north. Uh, from Adworth across the property. It's also key to note that there's a there's in the existing conditions, there's a 24 inch culvert that open discharges onto the Adworth property on the south end. And it she drains a significant amount of water through the property that's intended to be collected by the inlets along the north side of the property. It's, it's a significant amount of water. And let me just jump through. Um, let me jump ahead real quick. So our site is here is outlined in red. Um, again, Edworth Drive is on the south side of this red line. And I've hatched in blue basically what is being either open discharged off of Edworth Drive or coming in from the north and west onto the neighboring property and to the Edworth property. So we've approximated it at 12.3 acres. Um, or 38 uh, CFS, which is a lot of water that's surface draining. Again, it's surface drainage that's coming on to this property. And I think that's part of the issue in our study of this area. What we've determined is that there's a significant amount of water that's actually sheet draining and surface draining onto these properties that's trying to be accepted by these inlets. And that was one thing the conceptual review helped vet out that we saw this all this water that's surface draining. Now, when you look at the proposed condition, again, this is the existing condition. That's how it is today. There's 12.3 acres of area surface draining uh, that's contributing to the, the runoff problems on the adjoining property. Here's how it will be um, when we're done. Basically, we've intercepted all that water, so we've captured and piped the water that was currently open discharging on the south end of our property and we are going to pipe it and direct connect it into the box culvert and thereby um, eliminate that search that uh, surface drainage condition so the, the resulting surface area will be reduced significantly from almost 13 acres to uh, uh, almost two acres so the runoff has been significantly reduced the, uh, I, I'm sorry, the surface drainage has been significantly reduced. So again, the point of the conceptual review with MSD is do we think we, uh, based on what we've submitted and the feedback that we've received from MSD, do we have a comfort level? And I'll let, I'll let Bob or John um, uh, contribute as well. Do we think we have enough information that we can move forward and satisfactorily address the drainage and stormwater concerns that the that the uh, surrounding properties have, uh, specifically the the neighbors to the north, with this development, meaning that will we we don't want to put in a development that exacerbates or worsens any of the current conditions that they have, and if anything, we would want to um, improve them as much as we can. So um, the takeaway from the conceptual review was that we had a uh, a good feeling that we could address those concerns if this development were to move forward through the combination of, um, and again, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but we would provide the necessary detention required to detain the entire storm event. So we're not releasing additional water onto the adjoining property. And then we would also line, provide lining on our, our basins and so forth to prevent further infiltration onto the adjoining properties. So the takeaway is we, we have a very good feeling that we can address all the concerns that MSD will raise during the formal review process for the construction documents. And that this would be a good, uh, a good project that would not exacerbate or worsen any conditions uh, and, and hopefully improve uh, some of the conditions that the neighbors are currently experiencing. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any any questions that the, the committee may have, or or uh, I'm sure MSD is going to want to jump into with with um, their feedback as well. Thank you very much, Paul. Let me thank you very much, Paul. Let me see if any of my committee members have any questions. 
Any questions at all? Ma'am, do we have more speakers? Um, no, we have uh, some public comments, I understand. Okay, then I will have some questions if we have no further presentations. No, no further presentations. Okay. May I? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boyer, just a couple questions uh, for you. Um, before I get into the water, memory care, you're going to be having memory care there. Uh, having people with dementia in my family and familiar with those issues. Is this property fenced or what's to keep the uh, residents from walking into the surrounding areas? So the, the memory care, they will not be on the, um, and uh, again, you're it's really the inner workings of the building itself. The memory care is not going to be on the first floor. They're, they're going to be on the, the second floor, I believe. So they will not have access out. Uh, it's restricted access on the second floor. So they will be able to go outside. There is an out, outdoor um, 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 uh, deck area on, on the northwest side of the building um, here, the dark brown area, basically the the uh, memory care um, patrons will be able to exit and go outside within this area on the on the outs on the outside, but they will not have access to the lower level. or be able to get out without um, someone being with them on the lower level. If that if that answers your question, so they're not going to be out on the grounds unless they're on this unless they're assisted by a, a supervisor, or family member, that that type of individual. So since you didn't mention it, I'm assuming your answer is no, it will not be enclosed or fenced in any man in any manner. Right now, I don't believe it's proposed. We're not proposing to fence it. Um, okay. I don't know that there's anything against fencing it. I, I just right now we're not showing it to be fenced. Okay. And during our meeting in January, um, we asked county um, legal staff, if we approve this project and if the water mitigation efforts that you're you've described um, don't suffice and neighbors are impacted uh, like they've never been before because of the development are we on the hook financially li liability wise um and jen i don't know if you want to weigh in here from the county counselor's office i believe the answer back then was yes we would be if we knew this going in that there could be potential uh exposure for the county if we approve this and then something bad happened do you still feel that way john well, um i would say that I viewed the minutes of the first meeting and you post that um question to the county counselor who was in attendance at that meeting who has since retired and his response at the time was that he did not want to provide legal advice like that in open session but that certainly the county has been subject to such lawsuits in the past. And I think my answer would be the same. If, if the council would like an opinion on that question, our office is certainly happy to provide one. Um, but otherwise we would prefer not to give that kind of advice in open session. And I think I heard my answer in your response. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, and Mr. Boyer, um, some of the neighbors I remember and recall, maybe we'll hear this in the public comments, had concerns that you were doing a lot with the berms and the barriers to protect your property from flooding, but it wasn't doing anything uh, for them. Has that been uh, addressed in your most recent uh, site plan? It, it has. I, uh, what we were, I think the concerns were, and I don't want to speak for anybody, but I think the concerns were on the, let me jump to if I'm still sharing my screen. On this plan, on the north end of it, that we were continuing the slope up uh, from the property to the north. So there was some discharge of lawn area that was going down onto the adjoining property. What we've done uh, subsequently with the revised plan is everything that's coming from the north and west, the same drainage patterns are maintained. So we're collecting that water on site, maintaining the same. We're not doing any grading on the north, northwest corner other than the um, our, our bioretention slash detention base. And so uh, from the, the northeast corner, it's coming down into our property. Um, and from the northwest co corner, it's also coming down and onto our property. So that's a long answer. The short answer is yes, I think we've, we've addressed those concerns. Okay, and do you feel like 
you, the developer, the petitioner, have you done everything you could do to prevent these neighbors from being adversely impacted by this development when it comes to water issues? When it comes to water issues, yes, I do believe we have, and and I'll expand on that again. Um, what we've done, and again, today's not the end of it. You know, if, if we were, were, were allowed to move forward, we would still go through the the full blown review process with with MFD to work through any um, outstanding concerns. But what we've done is uh, construct. We've Added, we've shown our bioretention slash detention basin and, and then augmented it with uh, underground detention as required. We'll add as much as required to detain the storm event. So there's nothing more we can do. If we're detaining the entire storm event, there's nothing more that we can do. Um, and then from a, a temporary ponding standpoint and trying to mimic the existing conditions that are occurring, that there's existing ponding that occurs on site that also provides some relief to the property owners. We're providing that as well. What, what's currently shown on the plan is shown in light blue on the um, north edge of the property, as opposed to the detention, which is dark blue. The light blue area is the temporary ponding. Um, that can be expanded. But again, what we've done is there's a tremendous, there's thir oh, nearly 13 acres that is surface draining uh, towards the neighbor's property. We're intercepting that and piping it into the box culvert. So. Uh, we believe that a, there are a lot of those uh, surface drainage concerns are going to be alleviated, but we're still <clears throat> providing temporary ponding on site to mimic the existing conditions when that, um, if that box culvert is surcharged and the water backs up, we want to have a pond on our site rather than on the, the adjoining property. So again, it's a long answer. Uh, I believe we are doing everything that we can from a stormwater mitigation standpoint. Um, with the main brunt of it being we're providing as much detention and storage as necessary on this site to detain the entire event. Okay, one last question, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, I think I heard you right. You do not have final approval from MSD to move forward. Is that correct? Uh, this is this is Paul. No, so uh, what, again, what we've submitted is conceptual review. Um, if the project, if uh, the project is approved by the, the Public Improvements Committee and we move forward, then we would develop construction documents uh, and then formally address all the concerns that uh, are the concerns that MSD has outlined in their conceptual review. So it's a back and forth. We don't go through the, the, the construction design process. Um, we just go through the conceptual review process with MSD, which is standard. Why can't you do it the other way? Instead of coming to us before it's approved, come to us after it's approved. Uh, well, you're asking the developer in order to go, uh, it's typical review process are around 12 weeks and cost tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, we wanna hear the concerns of the Public Improvements Committee and know that we can address them because we've gone through the point of the conceptual review process with MSD is to understand what their concerns are and if we're able to address them. And we believe that they are, and I don't want to speak for MSD with John Grimm and Bob Miller here, they've also reviewed these plans in depth. So they, the point of it is to find out if we have a valid, uh, viable development before going through the entire exercise and spending tens of thousands of dollars on formal construction documents to go through the, the MSD review process. That is the point of the conceptual review. If there's problems that are identified that we cannot address, this is when they would come out. Um, we've identified those problems or MSDs identified those problems in conjunction with feedback from the owners. And we feel very good that we will be able to address all those concerns with our uh, development. Okay, and a question for Jacob. Uh, Jacob, uh, if the council, the PIC recommends to the council, and if we approve, but there are problems down the road with MSD um, and, you know, there's bumps in the road, does it come back to us for another uh, uh, stab at it or are we done with it at that point? 
My understanding is, is once the conditional use permit has been issued, um, the review is then is then handed off to county staff as well as other jurisdictions such as MSD to conduct the reviews um, as pertinent to what is written into the conditional use permit as well as all other county and pertinent um, you know uh, regulations. So um, once this once the conditional use permit has been um, if it is upheld um, at that point um, the review of which is then is then handed off to county staff and off to MSD staff who would then have to sign off um, with their engineers prior to the issuance of any building permits um, at that time. So we as a council would never get another look at it after it's approved. Is that accurate? After after the conditional use permit, if the conditional use permit were to be upheld, that is correct. Um, then the review would be handed off to county staff um, to complete the review on, on the behalf of the county. Have you ever seen the MSD uh, and all this conceptual plan, have you ever seen all of this work done and then come to the council for approval? No, uh, the typical, it, uh, I concur with how uh, Mr. Boyer um, explained it. Um, typically, that is their sort of concurrent reviews. Um, so the county staff is reviewing it while at the same time MSD is also reviewing it. Um, however, what I would note is that building permits um, are not issued until there is um, complete sign off from MSD. Um, so there's not, a, there's not an opportunity for um, something to get started in construction without MSD's full approval. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, because uh, Mr. Uh, John Graham and Bob Miller are on the phone uh, on the uh, call, and I did that. That was the question that I want to ask them uh, about the process. Is this a normal process that the, you utilize when uh, companies are asking for a uh, conditional use permit? Yeah, Bob. Bob, I'll take that one. Um, yes, I I um, I believe the developers use our conceptual review process when they're speculating on property, and they want uh, some preliminary guidance on the MSD requirements particular to that site. Um, so then we generate a letter, which, like I mentioned, we did in this case, and outline in in further detail what the requirements are going to be for the site. Um, and so, yeah, it's a typical, it, it doesn't happen all the time, um, but it is, it, it, we offer that review as a, as a preliminary uh, guidance. It, it's like a, uh, a further explanation or more tailored explanation of the requirements for that site as compared to just our, our general regulations. So is it safe to say that if, um, uh, we listened to Jacob and, and, and I heard Jacob say this. I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear that if after this is, uh, potentially approved, uh, then you will, if, if, if anything is awry here in terms of MSD's responsibility, that you would, uh, you would address that at that particular time. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you so much. Any other questions from or comments from uh, the other council member? Yeah, I, if I may, Councilwoman. Um, Certainly. Uh, are there any pre existing stormwater issues on the site as is? Uh, this is this is Paul Boyer. I'm, I'm not sure who, if the questions are addressed. Yes, there. I mean, there are issues flooding that's occurring on the on the property as it exists. And uh, there's also a uh, surcharge runoff that runs through the, the neighboring property to the north. So yes, the, the, the answer is yes, there are existing or pre-existing problems that exist on, that, that do exist from a saturation, saturated soil standpoint to ponding runoff to overland flow of large storm events, which is, cannot be accepted by the storm sewer and actually runs through the properties to the north by overland flow. So that, yeah, that, they're all there are pre-existing conditions now um, so i understand the hypothetical raised by councilman fitch about potentially things getting worse um is there any reason to think that actually this could make some of the pre-existing issues better well that's, yeah i i want to be um, um realistic but i want to be positive i think we can improve it again um there's there's a significant there's 13 acres that is surface draining um, 
across the Edwards property and it's being collected on inlets that border the north property line of the Edwards property. So it bore, it's 13 acres of surface drainage that is being collected on inlets that are straddled, that straddle the north property line. And when we complete our development, we're intercepting all that, that water to the south that's currently being discharged off Edwards Drive, just open discharge on the property. We're going to pipe that and discharge it directly into the box culvert. So I believe that that will alleviate a lot of the concerns, a lot of the surface drainage um, that's currently occurring. Um, we need to address the rest of the concerns as far as temporary ponding as we as we work through the process and satisfy MSD's concerns. Um, again, it's a, there's a, a surcharge box culvert that we're dealing with on this on this property that the water actually comes out of the inlets rather than goes in the inlets on, on large storm events. So we want to, we don't want to exacerbate that. And we'd like to improve those conditions by providing as much ponding and storage on our property as possible. So um, I, I think there is a high potential, we're not going to worsen it. And I think there's a high potential that we would improve it, but um, we won't know until we honestly, I don't want to make promises I, until we go through the MSD review process and, and fully analyze everything and address their concerns. Um, I know that if we address their concerns satisfactorily, we're not going to worsen it and we would more most likely improve it. Got it. Um, and then one of the other changes I noticed in the presentation, the initial presentation that we saw um, at the beginning of this meeting was about um, changing the number of stories of the development. Um, I think back in January when we heard from you, it was um, a three story and then part two story and now it has gone completely to three story. Is that correct? That is that is correct. Yeah. Can you explain what the rationale um, for that change was? Well, so we wanted to keep the same number of units. So we have 71 units, uh, 50 assisted living and 21 memory care. So we basically just reallocated the space. So when the when you the, the footprint is more sp spread out when you have two and three story uh, portions of the building. So you have a bigger footprint when we consolidate it, we just basically went up rather than spread out. And so that consolidated the footprint from what was originally shown, thereby reducing the impervious area. So that, that was the rationale. We didn't want to lose units. Uh, so we still have the 71 units, the, the 50 um, assisted living, 21 memory care, but we consolidated it into a full three-story footprint rather than a two and three-story footprint. So so perhaps that was one of the trade-offs that had to be made um, so that you could address some of the other concerns that had been raised. Yes, we're yeah. trying to minimize our, our, our footprints as much as possible. Obviously, the it's a benefit to us and it's a benefit to the properties to the north. It's a benefit to us by the fact that the, the less impervious area that we create, it's less impervious area that we have to mitigate. So if we tighten up the footprint and tighten up the parking, um, there's less area required for stormwater detention, underground detention, that type of thing. So yeah, it. small, a small footprint as possible benefits us and and the surrounding properties. Got it. Um, Madam Chair, I have no further questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Madam Chair, just a follow up with the yes. county counselor's office. Yes. Uh, Jen. Genevieve, uh, is she on still? Will we lose her? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Okay. Jen, so my question wasn't legal advice. It's more of a legal question is if this development is approved and if there's damage to surrounding properties and um, is it possible to have a developer indemnify the county for any of those legal claims? Um, Madam Chair, I would respectfully say that that is in fact legal, would be giving legal advice to answer that question. I understand. Uh, let me ask you a different way then. Are, are we familiar with any other developments where we required indemnification? I, I do not know that. Okay. I would look into That's probably the way I should have asked that. All right, thank okay. you. But I think it, if, well, I'm just taking, make sure I have the question. If he is approved and um, or if the petition is approved and there's damage to surrounding um, properties, properties, then can you ask the owner of this property to indemnify 
the county. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. If it's the will of the of the uh, any of the council members, we can provide an opinion on that. You can look into that, that if you would, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any other questions or comments at this time? We will move to public comments. As for the PIC committee, uh, we require a 24 hour notice of your intent to have a public comment. Uh, we They are three minutes each as normal in our regular meetings. Uh, Lynn, I believe I'm not sure how many we have. Can you let me know how many we have and just give the and let's start reading the public comments, please. Yes, Madam Chair, we have two public comments this afternoon. Okay. The first public comment is from Ken Bush. The St. Louis County attorney who was at the last PIC meeting regarding 24-19 Adworth Senior Living Center regarding LLC pending requests for CUP said if the 1064 and 3743 Druso Lane properties flooded, St. Louis County would be responsible for the damages. Since that statement was so quickly followed by the tabling of the issue and the adjournment of the previous meeting, is that still the case? What assurances do we have to that effect? Who will be held liable for damage to our properties if and when this project and the resulting structure causes flooding, property damage, and decreases in our property value due to now being in a potential flood zone. The next comment is from Philip Kaufman. Thank you for requesting MSD's conceptual review of Adworth Senior Living Preliminary Planning Study and allowing residential property owners the opportunity to express ongoing concerns. Prior to the St. Louis County Public Improvements Committee, PIC, granting request for conditional use permit, CUP. Given the updated preliminary development plan for Adworth Senior Living, dated 28 August 2020, it is apparent the developer is working to meet St. Louis County and MSD stormwater retention and runoff design standards. Many concerns I expressed at the PIC meeting in January 2020 are encapsulated in MSD's conceptual review summarized by the statement, the developer shall show the existing and proposed 100 year overland flow path for the bulk box culvert, the site drainage and off site flows that drain into the site. The analysis will be required to show no additional adverse impacts to adjacent properties. For this Adworth property, downstream water concerns do not result from the land disturbance nor the site drainage of this 2.85 acre lot by itself as long as storm and sanitary sewers can handle the increased loads resulting from the facilities and the on-site detention basin slowly discharging into the existing storm sewer system that is known to surcharge. Rather, because this lot is the lowest and last remaining undeveloped lot in the commercial zoned area, it is the off-site flows that drain into the site that are of immediate concern to adjacent and subsequent concern to downstream property owners. Managing overland stormwater flow from off-site properties is not readily apparent on the current site plan. The MSD conceptual review addresses off-site water flow in their review Approximately 37 CFS from Adworth crosses the site before it enters the box culvert. The MSD review recommends mitigating actions such as the swale on the east side of the project on the high side of the retaining wall should be routed to the detention basin if possible. And the ponding area created near proposed inlet 6A shall mimic or exceed the existing temporary on-site ponding. In fact, after mitigating measures are implemented, assurance that waters are retained is dependent on final grading and future silt buildup following development completion. As currently depicted, the property elevations on Adworth are higher than adjacent residential zone properties. There is no assurance that offsite flows that drain around the new Adworth development will be detention or temporary on-site ponding areas. Madam Chair, I need to stop there. That's 400 words. Thank you. Is that the end of the public comment? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you very much, then Lynn. Um, we will now have further discussion and recommendations, uh, if any, from this committee. 
Any further discussion on this issue from the committee? Any recommendation from this committee? Madam Chair, I would like, I was hoping that Councilman Trakas from the 6th District would be able to join this call uh, to see what his concerns, if those have been alleviated or not. We haven't had a chance to hear from him. Um, and, and maybe a question for Jen is, do we have to take some sort of action right now? Uh, we don't have the answer on the legal side of it, and we have not heard from Councilman Trakas since this new proposal is in front of us. Uh, is there such a thing as waiting? Councilman, Councilman Fitch, and I, I appreciate what you're saying here. Uh, this has been on our agenda since November of last year, and I feel that we need to make a decision today. We have had ample time for illegal to even weigh in on this if they can. And, uh, and so I, I think that we need to... Um, uh, Make a recommendation to move forward with this uh, with this plan, and if that is uh, in order, Genevieve, I think that is in order. Yes, ma'am, and I would just add that um, in the event that any um, council member, any council member, would have, well, let me back up. Say that this committee can only make a recommendation. Correct. To the full council. The full council. So, and so that will have to appear. Um, on a future regular council meeting agenda, whatever recommendation this uh, they choose to make one. Right, and, that is my understanding. Right, and if, if based upon the action that is taken at this meeting by this committee, if any of the committee members or in fact any of the council members have a question for which they would like our office to provide a legal opinion to the, the the recommendation coming before the full council, we would be obviously, as always, happy to do that. Are well within their rights as council members to request that. And so that's not a problem for me. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Madam so with that, I will move uh, that we uh, uh, move for approval. I think we will recommend to the full council uh, the approval of PC 24-19 Edward Senior Living R-E-L-L-C. Do I have a second on that one? Uh, second. Madam Chair, just one question before we vote. Certainly. Do you know when this would appear on the council agenda? Well, it won't be tomorrow, correct? I, I don't, no, no, it won't be tomorrow. That's my understanding. So that will be, I believe, a couple of opportunities. Sure. So we will have time. Issues. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Well, um, I guess that was a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I will vote aye uh, at this point to uh, give, you know, since we now have time to get that legal opinion and for Councilman Trakis and the other council members to weigh in. So. Thank you so kindly. So uh, if I'm hearing correctly, that is a, all affirmative for three and uh, no, no um, dissensions. Um, any other concerns or questions becoming before this body at this particular point? If Madam not, Chairman. then- this is Jacob from the Department of Planning. I just wanted to note that prior, um, the CUP, the, the setbacks and the conditions need to be revised based on the plan that has been uh, um, voted on today. Just one of the setbacks um, needs to be revised prior to um, the full council taking action. Okay, and then any other council members that have questions or need additional information, uh, feel free to contact Jacob or Gail, and uh, they'll be more than happy to help you. How about that? <laughs> All right, um, so, so nothing else to come before this committee. I uh, need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for your time and your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.